and welcome to the European History Time Travel Channel. I'm Ms. DeWald and today I'm going to take you back in time to several events in European history. Make sure you have your notes, the European History video notes, and you are summarizing each of the sections as we go through that time travel course. You might have learned about these events in previous years, but this year we're going to be learning about these different historical events from the European perspective. Okay, are you ready? I've heard it's quite of a bumpy ride, so let's get ready. All right, let me just key in my magic. Whoa! much easier chance of getting to India. All right, well, I best be getting on my way. took great risk to explore unknown waters. They did this for gold, God, and glory. Gold means that they wanted to find lots of luxury goods like gold, silk, and many different spices. This time period happens between the mid 1400s and the 1600s. What's God and glory you ask? Well, let's jump into the next time period and find out. Look at all these amazing treasures of the new world. Let's take these resources back to Spain and conquer the land for us. The more land we have, the more powerful our empire will be. The king and queen are going to be so happy with us. We will be so wealthy. Let's keep exploring so we can convert the natives and people into Christians. It wasn't just the Spanish who colonized the New World. England, France, and Portugal did as well. Unfortunately though, Europeans ignored the native people living in the New World. Um, they ignored them and quickly took over their lands. They converted them into Christianity, completely disregarding their religion. And unfortunately, many natives who didn't die of diseases became slaves. Because of European colonization though, European cultures can be seen all around the world today. That's why in Canada, Canadians speak French and English. That's because Canada was colonized by the French and the British. That's why here in the United States, we speak English because we were once colonized by the British. Um, places in Latin America mostly speak Spanish because Spain colonized that region of the world. And in Brazil, do you know what Brazilians speak? Portuguese. All right now, so let's fast forward to the 1800s to see what has happened in the world since the Europeans have taken over the new world. Let's go. Well, we've lost our 13 colonies and all the amazing resources. Let's go to Australia. It's so far away from the rest of the world and it will allow us to send our prisoners there. 
we can also build a Navy base so we can maintain our reputation of the strongest Navy. I also hear Africa and Asia are good places to colonize. We need resources from these lands so we can take them back to power our new factories. This new age of factories has allowed us to produce so many goods at a faster pace instead of at home by hand. We are going to be so wealthy and powerful. Now, we need to find more land. I hear the bigger our empire, the stronger we'll be. Well, it looks like we are starting to lose our colonies in the new world too. Let us go to Africa and Asia. I hear the bigger our empire, the stronger we shall be. Will we colonize most of Central and South America? Whew. Estamos cansado. We're tired. We'll take over the Philippines now. I hear the bigger our empire, the stronger we will be. Well, for a tiny country, we have sure conquered a lot. Brazil, parts of Africa and Asia. I hear the bigger our empire, the stronger we will be. Okay, we're back now. So, the desire for resources led to competing for more land, so places like Africa and Asia were colonized. The British Empire was the largest empire out of every European country during the 1800s. In fact, it's even said that the sun never set on the British Empire. And that's because Britain had colonies in almost every continent in the world. It is said according to worldatlas.com that the British controlled 25% of the land we have here on earth. That's a lot. Oh gosh, I just got word that there's a lot of tension going on right now. There's more countries joining this competition for more land. Let's flash back to 1914 to see what all this fuss is about. Come on. We're late to this scramble, but our military is growing stronger and stronger. We formed alliances with Austria-Hungary, Italy, and the Ottoman Empire. The British and the French don't know who they're messing with. We've got to get those Germans under control. They're building their military and forming alliances, so let's do the same. We don't know what they're up to, but it cannot be good. I'm down. My people are sick of the pride that Germany has. Their nationalism is out of control. French people are the best people. We will protect our allies in case something happens. <sighs> well. Once European countries started colonizing lands all around the world, they began to build their militaries to protect their newly conquered lands. They began to form alliances amongst each other. Germany, Italy, Austria-Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire were known as the Central Powers or the Triple Alliance. Great Britain, France, and Russia were known as the Triple Entente. The next event was something the world has never seen before. with the Germans. That's fine, Germany. We Brits are at war with you now. <laughs> 